Hello, and welcome to Was It Worth It? Season 2, Episode 8. My name's Dane. And I'm Tim. And uh, for those who have never listened to the show before, Was It Worth It? is a video game review podcast brought to you by Shark Tank Media. That's shark with a C. So, Tim, uh, what game are we reviewing today? We are reviewing the first-person 3D puzzle platformer called Polarity, made by Blue Button Games. It's kind of like Portal, but comparing it to Portal, I feel like, puts completely unfair expectations on the game. Well, especially um, considering it's $9? Yes, Polarity? it's, it's $8.99 on Steam, and uh, I also think comparing it to Portal is unfair because it's not like Portal in any ways other than it's a 3D puzzle platformer where you're using blocks to... to solve puzzles. Yeah, to press buttons that ultimately solve puzzles. Um, other than that, there's not really a comparison. It's got an interesting little mechanic where you're able to change between your polarity of colors, either red color or blue color, and that changes how you interact with the environment or certain parts of the environment. Mm -hmm. Other than that, you're getting blocks and putting them in places and jumping from moving platform to moving platform and going through walls and ultimately trying to make your way to the end of the level. Um, there is technically a story, but it's very paper thin. Mm -hmm. uh, what did you think of the game, Dan? Oh, man. Well, I was actually pretty excited for the game going into it. You know, I watched a, a, a trailer and thought right away, this looks kind of Portal influenced. And, and I thought, well, you know, if, if they took some of the good elements from Portal, you know, if they were influenced by Portal in the right ways, then it could be something really cool. But upon playing it, you know, pretty early on, I kind of realized that uh, it wasn't that much like Portal. <laughs> no. And not really in a good way, you know, you might think, hey, this is different from what I was expecting, but that actually sets it apart and makes it more unique. But that's not even really what I was feeling about this either. You know, you, you had mentioned in describing the game that you change your polarities between red and blue, uh, in which when it first showed me that you can do that, I thought, oh, okay, so all the puzzles in the game are going to be based around this mechanic. And really, it was so strangely, like, intermittent in yeah. how it had you do that. It almost seemed like they just peppered that in, like, oh, yeah, you're supposed to change colors. Okay, here's a platform for you to stand on. Yeah. Like, that you have to be the blue color to stand on, otherwise you'll fall through it. You know, that kind of thing. They really just, they, it just didn't feel very cohesive. Yeah, I think, for me, a lot more of the puzzles came from arranging, like, there are these, like, bounce platforms. You have to arrange them in a certain way on certain puzzles. Yeah. And knowing, like you know, where to put the blocks at the right time and that kind of thing it was more of the puzzle than, than, you know, it was almost just like, okay, I have to press this button a few times to get through this part because yeah. it changes my color. Other than that. <laughs> and, and it almost seems like they could tell that the gameplay was not very exciting, that the puzzles weren't very hard or well thought out because they gave you these things called like data cubes or, or yeah, data cubes or something like that. Um, they're these sort of just green particle yeah, effects. It's just data. I mean, you're, you, the the story is you're playing hackers and you're supposed to be getting through firewalls to collect data. That's the technical story. But uh, you're just going through puzzles and f finding little crystals called data that are placed in really arbitrary spots. In fact, there's only like one level that I can think of where it actually was like actually had it hidden in a clever way. Yeah. Otherwise, it was just like cheap ways. Like, it, oh, it was tucked behind the corner in the very end <laughs> room. So if you didn't look in that, you know, every corner of every room, you're going to miss them. I so. definitely agree. There were even times where they put one kind of like up on a platform and you could see it early on. And the thought might have been, oh, how am I ever going to get that? But it really wasn't quite like that. Like, you could just, you, you're going through the puzzle, you look to your left, you can tell that the pla you know, that the, the side of the wall just leads out to where that crystal was. Oh, yeah. I'll walk over there, I'll grab it, I'll walk back to where I was going. Right. Um, and, and also, the game does not have a lot of content. I, I burned through the regular levels in 50 minutes, so less than an hour. Uh, and then, and it was weird too because you finish those levels, and then there's this, you know, it, it, the game doesn't even have cutscenes. So to tell you the story, it's just a black screen with white text. Yeah. And it was like, you did a great job hacking all that stuff. We want you to keep hacking. Here's for extra us. money. Yeah, extra money that doesn't have any Credits. purpose in the game. <laughs> um, and then you can move on to the bonus levels, which are just as more of the same. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I didn't finish all the bonus levels because I just really was so kind of bored that I just wanted to move on to something else. But because I could tell the bonus levels were more of the same, I just, you know, I kind of stopped. I didn't feel like I really needed to play those. And you mentioned that you did all the regular levels and bonus levels in about an hour and a half. Yeah, um, maybe an hour and 45, but somewhere between there. So after saying all that, and I know it sounded pretty negative, 
I, I would have to say, I, even at just 899, I still don't really think that polarity was worth it because as a puzzle fan, I, I mean, I didn't even really get my puzzle fix. Yeah, I agree. It, it was kind of disappointing as a puzzle game, and that's really what it was. It was a puzzle game. It wasn't anything else. Um, and, you know, I agree with you. I, I feel like it wasn't worth it. I think $5, maybe. There was a... Yeah, $5, I could see it being yeah. being worth it. There is a local co-op that you can do. They have co-op... Uh, or a local multiplayer. You can do co-op and a um, PvP, so to speak. It was a little... Uh, I don't know. It kind of reminded me of uh, that... Oh, what's it called? There's that game where you're on trampolines and you're trying to throw the balls back and forth. Um, oh, yeah. Kind of reminded me of that, where you're basically <laughs> getting cubes and trying to throw them through a barrier into certain targets on the enemy's side yeah. and gets you points. And then uh, co-op campaign was more or less more the same of Well, it was almost like the player. puzzles. The puzzles in the co-op were even more simplistic just yeah. because it was just like, well, I guess the two of you have to do some stuff. Yeah. Um, and well, although talking about the the co-op or even the verses, I the one thing because you know we've just been laying on negative thing after negative thing. One thing that I was impressed by and kind of didn't expect after some of the other issues I had with the game is when I plugged in my Xbox controller into your computer and we fired up the game, it automatically knew that you were going to use the keyboard and mouse and that I was going to use the controller and there was no configuring necessary. We right. just popped into co-op and I had my character and you had your character and we could control them. And I was I was so expecting us to have to pause it and go into the settings and like right, switch yeah. something around. It was around. quite literally plug and play. Yeah, so that was cool. Yeah, so that that's that's one good thing going for the game. Otherwise, I mean... I don't know, I could go on and complain some more, but I don't know that there's much more to say. The controls were a little janky, I would get stuck on small ledges. Yeah. Uh, one time I was, and there was one ledge where I was trying to jump forward and it would make me jump backwards and, you know, you had to hit it just right. The music was bad, it wasn't, you know, horrible, but it was bad. I turned it off. Not <laughs> yeah. A, well, and that's the thing, what, uh, what I just kind of, the word that came to mind when you brought up the music was afterthought. And I really feel like that describes a lot of aspects of this game i think they just sort of had the general idea you know oh a block and color based puzzles in a sort of a 3d uh environment that's a little reminiscent of portal uh that might sell we need yeah. all this other <laughs> stuff to still make sure we have a game sure so let's get some boring music and the interface will just look like it was made by a high school student and, <laughs> you know I, I, yeah. it's just it's just not a lot of thought and love went into this game it's it's pretty it doesn't have a lot of personality yeah and i mean that's why it's less than ten dollars yeah oh definitely i mean and that's i even thought to myself you know i probably could justify this maybe being worth it at the nine dollars but I really do think five is my sweet spot for something like this like nine would have been worth it if there was just a little more thought that went into even just the puzzles if the puzzles were a little bit more complicated you know and challenging um, yeah there's plenty of free puzzle games out there you can play and get a puzzle fix you know what i mean yeah that's more satisfying yeah than exactly yeah exactly. for sure so yeah i mean uh, sorry if this feels like a cop out i, I know that you know we've, <laughs> we've had a lot more to say about games on, in past episodes um and we really thought that this was going to be more interesting the trailer really yeah. showed something more interesting than what we really ended up with yeah we we legitimately were excited and there's there's you know compared to other games out there you know we didn't we we weren't quite ready to sink the 60 bucks on a couple couple copies of advanced warfare and, yeah that was something you know, there, we thought about there weren't sorry. a lot of other games <laughs> coming out right now um yeah so so this is the game that excited us and ultimately we were let down so you know but it is what it is it we technically we did get it on sale it was 15 percent off so it was 749 7 so you know that's something <laughs> yeah um, that, that uh, softens the blow a little bit but yeah, anyway, uh, thanks for listening, guys, and uh, don't forget to check out our website. That's sharktank.com, shark with a C. Yep, we've got uh, plenty of other reviews and plenty of other types of shows as well, Let's Plays and tabletop gaming shows and whatnot. So Yeah, and we got this awesome interview show called Name Your Game, so definitely check that out. All right, thank you so much. Take it easy. Bye.